Hello, everybody. It's been a month since I set up my balcony solar system. The location of the solar panels seems to be okay, as proven by the daily yield of 6 to 8 kilowatt hours. Therefore, I decided to implement a permanent solution for the cable routing, as until now, the cables have been going over the roof of my garage and then through the window of the garage to the inverter kept inside. This routing was not ideal for two reasons, trip hazards and unnecessary length of cabling. As PV enthusiasts know very well, it is advisable to limit the voltage drop over the cable to less than 1 volt if possible. Just for context, the voltage drop over 30 meters of 6 millimeter diameter solar cable is 0.531 volts. If the length of cable can be reduced to 10 meters, the voltage drop reduces to 0.177 volt. So you get an idea. In order to get the cables to the inverter and battery modules inside the garage with the shortest length possible, I had to cut a hole in the steel wall of my garage. To minimize the chances of water ingress and also potential structural implications, the hole diameter was chosen to be 32 millimeters the smallest standard size available in order to accommodate all eight solar cables. I then plugged the hole with a water butt of the same diameter, which then meant that the inner diameter of the water butt, which was 28 millimeters, was too small to allow an MC4 connector to pass through if a six millimeter cable was already routed through the hole. The four solar panels that I have would mean eight cables would have to be passed through in total and there was no way I could accomplish this without having to cut off all MC4 connectors from one end of all eight cables and then attach new connectors. Cutting off connectors is easy but attaching new connectors means I had to master the art of wire stripping and crimping. So here's my tool set. The first one is a wire cutter and stripper with a rather clever mechanism. The second is a wire crimper designed specifically for solar cables. The third is a pair of MC4 connector wrenches. The ones in plastic as shown here are the best as they would break before they break the connector. Now this is how the wire cutter works. Pretty simple. The wire stripper is the exciting part. Note how one jaw grips the cable insulation and the other pinches the surface and pulls. The tool did not manage to strip the inner sheath however, but that being thin and soft was easily removed with a knife without damaging the wire strands inside. The crimping is the most delicate part of the entire operation. You first need to make sure that the wire strands are not bent, broken or twisted. There is a simple thumb rule to follow when pairing up the MC4 connector with the ferrule that goes inside. The male connector is assembled with a female ferrule, while the female connector is assembled with a male ferrule. Because this is non-intuitive, many are likely to make a mistake the first time, thereby scrapping the first MC4 connector. While crimping, the wire end of the ferrule has to be oriented between the crimping teeth as shown. This also is non-intuitive, and if you do not know this beforehand, you'll end up scrapping the second MC4 connector. Once crimped, it is a good idea to grip the cable in one hand and the ferrule in the other and give it a nice tug to see if they come apart. They should not. In fact, they should be firmly in contact in order to prevent arcing and a potential fire later on when in operation. It is always better to color code your cables one way or the other. 
In my case, I used red cables for positive and black cables for negative. If you mess this up midway while crimping, there, you've scrapped your third MC4 connector. Always remember to first route your cable through whichever orifice or fitting that you had planned for. Often, in the heat of things, you might cut off the old connector and then quickly crimp on the new connector without making those routing changes. This can very well cost you your fourth MC4 connector. Watch carefully how I did it right first time to the first pair of positive and negative cables and then triumphantly progressed to the second, the third and the fourth pairs. Towards the end of the whole exercise, I was enjoying it thoroughly. The end result was very satisfying. All eight cables were neatly routed through the hole in the garage wall, through the water butt and through a flexible hose for added protection. Good luck with your MC4 experiments.